there's a humorist, there's a humorist. Big deal. Now we want a humorist. <laughs> this is seem really random. Maybe I haven't hit it yet, but um, I'm a runner, and one of my biggest things is my muscles always contract, and so it creates like a large amount of pain when I stop running. And they always tell me that I'm low on um, like phos the phosphate, and then I need or and potassium and stuff like that. So it seems like it has a lot to do with the calcium and not the. Well, there's two things. Okay. So you have to have enough sodium to do a depolarization. Mm -hmm. And you have to have enough uh, potassium to do a repolarization. Okay. So if you're deficient in either one, then you, you can't create the electrical events that are going to make the cell, muscle cell contract the relax. Okay. So then the third thing is calcium. So you have three ions to worry about. Calcium, potassium, and sodium. So since sodium is your biggest one in your extracellular fluids, then you, you can lose that readily through sweat, sodium chloride. So that can screw you up. So that distant runners in particular, if they go into hyponeutremia, uh, which is low sodium, then they'll get mentally confused. They'll start getting tremors. Uh, and they can go into a coma and die. So that would be the most rapid thing we would see in one change. Potassium manning, it's a little harder. So what we do oftentimes see is an increase in cramping in people that have low potassium. So you can get potassium from bananas is probably the best source of potassium. Or fruit, which is oftentimes like with distant running where they have cantaloupe and stuff at, at uh, places where you can stop and, and get a little food and water because it's, it's high in potassium. It's like great Gatorade was invented as well. And then calcium, because we store so much in our sarcoplasmic particulate, you don't see problems with calcium unless the person's been in a chronic state. Um, uh, so like 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 we don't want to go around all day like this. What do we have to do? Relax. We have to make the muscle relax. So that's why we drew this line in but one. What do we need to do to make the muscle relax? Reverse the depolarization. How do we reverse the depolarization? With a repolarization. Now what ion is going to move? No. Well, not, not initially. What's, going to, what's the first ion that's going to move? Potassium. Yes. So remember, in my resting stage, all the channels are closed. Ions are moving through the membrane either passively because they leak through the membrane and we have a sodium potassium pump that constantly re equilibrates it, right? But if I reach a threshold then I open voltage gated sodium channels and that causes sodium to quickly diffuse in a cell which causes the cell to depolarize. But as soon as I hit plus 30 then my sodium channel flows and my potassium channels open because they are voltage gated channels. And then I'm going to quickly convert from a depolarizing phase to a repolarizing phase. And repolarization is going to bring our membrane back to the way it started because we at one time had we started with positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Then when we depolarized the membrane, we went to positive on the inside and negative on the outside. So when we repolarize the membrane, what do we want to do? We want to make it positive on the outside and negative on the inside. So if I shove potassium out here, then I'm losing positive ions from the inside of my cell. My phosphate and cellular proteins are still inside my cell. So the cell is going to become more negative on the inside. And because the potassium is going into the interstitial fluid, it's becoming more positive on the outside. And I repolarize my membrane. All right. And so when I repolarize my membrane, I'm going to create the event that's going to close my calcium channels. And then I have a calcium pump. And I'll start removing calcium from the sarcoplasm, putting it back in my, my cistern. And then it's going to diffuse off the troponin molecule. 
and then the troponin and tropomyosin are going to return to their original shape, and then the muscle can begin to relax. So, we, if we reach threshold, we undergo a rapid depolarization. As soon as we hit plus 20, we undergo a rapid repolarization. And then what brings the membrane back to its original state at rest is the sodium potassium pump. Okay. And again, for, for skeletal muscle, we don't have to worry about that period of hyperpolarization. Okay. So calcium channels close. The active transport recovers the calcium back in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Troponin and tropomyosin return to their original shape. Now my muscle can begin to relax. So this is kind of an overview of all of it. So we started here with a muscle at rest. We get a nerve impulse carried on a motor neuron. It releases acetylcholine, opens up those acetylcholine channels. Enough sodium moves in to move the membrane from minus 70 to minus 55. I reach threshold and I open all my voltage-gated sodium channels and the membrane quickly depolarizes. Depolarization is carried down t tubules, causes the opening of calcium channels, calcium floods out, binds with troponin, and the muscle begins to relax and the sarcomeres shorten. So now what I want to do is I want to repolarize my membrane, have that carried down my T-tubules, that closes my calcium channels, the calcium pump recovers the calcium. As the calcium out here diminishes, it starts diffusing off my troponin molecule, and then get picked up. When the troponin is no longer bound with calcium, it returns to its original state and prevents actinomyosin from being able to interact. Yeah. Isn't that cool? With electricity, and the muscle will contract and then relax. So that's called a simple twitch, where the muscle goes from a resting stage to contraction stage to relaxation stage. If I graph it, and I have a computer that tells me when the muscle was stimulated, then the arrow here represents the point of stimulation of the muscle. But yet, and what we're doing is we're contracting time, we're, we're graphing time against force of contraction. So anytime we make a graph, the, this axis is always your dependent variable, which is time, something's going to stay the same. And the independent variable, which you're actually testing, always goes on this axis. When you graph, you're trying to show something to somebody and, and a graph is worth a million words if you do it well. So, that you, so when you graph something, I would give them a, I, I would start them at a B minus already for this graph. The zero is always at the intercept of the x, y. And then once you set your units up, they have to be constant. So if you're, if you're doing 10 millisecond blocks of time, if you're running out over here, you can all of a sudden go to 20 or 30 so you can stay on the ground. So the first thing you have to do is play around with that a little bit to make sure you're blocked of time. I would now they'd be down to a C for this graph because they didn't even tell me what their units are over here. So there should have been like one, two. They told me force of contraction. They didn't even tell me what they were measuring. And it would be grams of force. So when you're Drawing a graph, you got to tell something what they're everybody what they're looking at, right? They did okay here. They told me that time is in milliseconds, but they didn't do that over there. So what happens is we stimulate the muscle, and it doesn't look like the muscle does anything for a while. It's just sitting there, like, okay, I stimulate. Why aren't you contracting? So it's called the latent period. And that's because the muscle has a bunch of stuff to do before it can contract. You've got to depolarize the membrane of the muscle, carry that depolarization down the T-tubules, depolarize the sarcoplasmic reticulum, open calcium channels, calcium has to diffuse out of the terminal cisterns, and calcium has to bind with the troponin and tropomyosin molecules, and the troponin and tropomyosin molecules have to change the shape. Now actinomyosin can interact and a muscle can begin to contract. So it takes a little while for that stuff to happen. We have a latent period. Uh, 
It can. It can. If you insert the electrodes right in the muscle, it does. <laughs> but if you have to transfer it through skin, no. Yeah, no. Okay. All right, and then we go through a contraction phase. So during contraction, actinomyosin interacting power strokes. And then we, the muscle begins to relax. So we define the physical events of the muscle as a latent period where it doesn't seem like the muscle is doing anything. Looks like it's late for work. And then a contractile period and a relaxation period. So the next graphs are a key graph to your understanding. This is actually two graphs, and they didn't tell you what the graphs were. So we give them an F for this whole effort because the only thing they told us was, again, time is going this way and force of contraction. They can tell us what they're doing here. This is an action potential. So this is resting membrane potential, depolarization followed by repolarization. So they should have millivolts over here, going from minus 72 plus 30 and then back to minus 70. So what this is trying to do is show you the relative time of the electric events on the muscle compared to the physical events of the muscle. Does that make sense? The membrane, what's going on with the membrane, the blue line, what's physically going on with the muscle, the red line. Okay? So remember what we said is membranes go from rest to depolarization quickly to repolarization back to rest. So if you drew a line up, then repolarization is actually at the end of the latent period. The membrane has already gone through a, a depolarization or repolarization. But because we got to do all that stuff inside the cell, then the cell continues to continue with its activity even though the membrane potential is done. And so during most of the time the cell is contracting and relaxing, the membrane is back at rest. So the electrical events on a, on a membrane are incredibly rapid compared to the physical events of a muscle. But what that allows us to do is to stimulate a muscle repeatedly with our brain to make the muscle continue to contract. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Your stick is over there still. All right. So what you're going to do tomorrow is you're going to draw a graph of simple twitch, that one, and then, and same as this one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stimulate the muscle twice, but we're going to stimulate the muscle before it completely relaxes. So since it's not completely relaxed, then the muscle is shorter, starts at a shorter point. So the same amount of contraction is going to make the muscle shorten more or increase the force of contraction. So when you do wave summation, where you stimulate muscle twice before it completely relaxes, the second contraction is always going to be a stronger contraction, because the starting point is different. It's just like my arm being here, and allowing my arm to go up to here and come back, versus allowing my arm to do this, and then contracting it when it's right there then the recovery is going to be a faster recovery, right? right. Okay. And then if I do this game more than once, you can actually get the muscle to contract harder and harder and harder and harder. So this is called unfused tetanus. What happens if you shorten the contractile period? The key to this is look at the distance between these two depolarization events. Look at the distance here. I shorten them. If I actually take these over and put them over here, Look where the second contract, second depolarization is occurring before the muscle begins to relax. So if you contract the muscle before it begins to relax, it will never, if you stimulate again before it begins to relax, it will never undergo a relaxation. Then it'll just go into a complete tetany. But we know the muscle is being sti stimulated repeatedly. So I can do that on someone tomorrow. I can make them do a simple twitch. I can make them do waist summation. 